How's it going everyone? 2023 is promising to be an absolutely loaded year for Japanese RPG fans. I mean, I feel like JRPG fans have been eating really well for a really long time with a variety of franchises really coming together in terms of getting releases here in the West. Big franchises continuing to drop some banger releases and then you've got newer IPs and everything in between. It's just a really good time to be a fan of JRPGs and in this video, I want to take a look at over 20, yes, over 20 JRPGs coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. It's going to be a long one, so let's just get right into it, and let's start things off with the Final Fantasy titles. Let's get that out of the way right away. So let's start with quite possibly the biggest JRPG release of the year, and that is, of course, Final Fantasy 16, a PlayStation 5 exclusive, a next-generation title, the latest numbered entry in the Final Fantasy franchise, and after Final Fantasy 15 left, you know, some people disappointed. There were aspects of that game that I liked. Narratively, I thought it faltered in a lot of areas, but now we got a brand new title in Final Fantasy 16. Action-oriented combat system looks to be a darker tale. Final Fantasy 16 introduces gamers to an all-new standalone story in the Final Fantasy universe, an epic dark fantasy world that takes place in the realm of Valistia, a land blessed in the light of the Mother Crystals, and where peace falters as the spread of the Blight threatens to destroy their dominions, the fate of the land is decided by the icons, powerful and deadly creatures and their dominance, men and women who have been blessed with the ability to call upon and wield them. This is the tale of Clive, a warrior granted the title of First Shield of Rosaria, a sworn to protect his younger brother Joshua, the dominant of the Phoenix of Fire. Before long, Clive will be caught up in great tragedy and swear revenge on the dark icon Ifrit, a mysterious entity that brings calamity in its way. Again, a dark fantasy world, action-packed battles with various powers, titanic clashes between the summonings and so much more it is gonna have a story focus mode recommended for those who are less comfortable with action games and then there will be a challenging option as well final fantasy 16 will be dropping finally on june 22nd exclusively for the playstation 5 for now it is noted to be a six month window of exclusivity so maybe it will hit other platforms next up the other major final fantasy title final fantasy 7 rebirth this is part two of the Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy, and the Seven Remake is a game that I really enjoyed. I think a lot of you guys really enjoyed it as well. Obviously, it took a, took a little bit of a sidestep from the Final Fantasy VII we knew back in the late 90s, but now we are going to get the second part of this trilogy, and it's going to be very interesting to see the pacing and where they take the story of the FF7 Remake. Look, I know a lot of people are incredibly skeptical on where this narrative is going to go, but there are two ways this thing can go down. It can, one, turn out to be really great and be a very good refinement to Final Fantasy VII, or two, it can be a hilarious train wreck and we can all laugh at it. Either way, the original Final Fantasy VII still exists, so if you want to go play that, go play it, but I am all on board on this remake trilogy, and obviously Square Enix is all in on Final Fantasy VII, as this is going to be a mainstay for years to come. Now, Rebirth is scheduled for release in winter of 2023. Could that bleed on over into 2024? Absolutely. It would be incredible if Square Enix drops Final Fantasy 16 and the 7 uh, Remake Part 2 Rebirth within a six-month time frame. That would be ridiculous. And I kind of find that hard to believe to actually happen, but we'll see. Square Enix has been on point as far as dropping JRPG, so it could happen, but we'll see if that does come to fruition. Nonetheless, a JRPG everyone is super excited for. Next up, last of the Final Fantasy titles, do want to give a shout out to the Final Fantasy 1-6 to Pixel Remaster. This is one a lot of people are excited for to go back and play some of the classic Final Fantasy titles. And while these games are definitely throwbacks, I think that's what the idea of this collection is Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 3, Final Fantasy 4, 5, and 6. Maybe at some point we'll see full-on remakes for some of these titles because I would definitely like to see a full-on remake of FF4. That's just my two cents. Nonetheless, that will be coming in spring of 2023 on PlayStation 4. All right, with the Final Fantasy out of the way, let's talk some other games. First up, we got One Piece Odyssey. One Piece Odyssey is, of course, a traditional JRPG within the One Piece universe. I know there's a lot 
lot of fans of One Piece that are super excited for the game. Truth be told, I'm not a big One Piece guy. Can't get into so many episodes. Tried to give it a shot. A lot of my friends are super into it, but I could understand the idea of being a big fan of the anime and the IP in general, and then having a traditional JRPG. That sounds like a match made in heaven, and if it turns out to be a well-made JRPG, it could be something that gets people into One Piece as well, as this is a game that is going to be accessible to non-One Piece fans as well, or even, you know, more so casual fans, at least those that have heard of it, I think would have at least a level of inherent interest. One Piece Odyssey will be hitting PlayStation 4 on January 13th. Next up, let's keep the anime into JRPG train rolling. We got Dragon Ball Z Kakarot on PlayStation 5. It will be a free upgrade if you already own the PlayStation 4 version. On top of that, DBZ Kakarot is getting a plethora of new DLC. If you don't know, the main game covers the beginning of Z all the way until the end of the Boo arc. And then there's already DLC out. There's a DLC for the Trunks alternate timeline story. And then there's some DB Super content as well. However, with the release of the PlayStation 5 version, Version. Not only will be it be getting a visual upgrade, it will also be seeing a bevy of new DLC. Starting off on Season 2 of this DLC wave is Bardock Alone Against Fate, so you're going to see the Bardock DLC. I would love to see something like a Broly DLC implemented at some point. Nonetheless, DBZ Kakarot was a good game, and to see it upgraded on the PlayStation 5 is going to be great as well. Kakarot will be dropping on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series on January 13th. Next up, we got two major titles making their way on over to the PlayStation 4. Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4 Golden. So let's go through both of these. Persona 3 Portable obviously is a bit controversial in the sense that, yes, everybody loves Persona 3. If you played it back on the PS2, it was excellent. Persona 3 Portable was released on the PSP and is a bit more of a streamlined version of Persona. It's not the version I think a lot of people want, but now there's rumblings that there's going to be a full-on remake of Persona 3 happening at some point. So from that sense, if that is true, I can see why they want the Portable route uh, to make the 3 remake more enticing. Maybe that's what they were thinking. I don't know. P3P is still really good. It's just it was designed for a portable platform, so I think Persona 3 FES would have been the better route to go. Nonetheless, it's going to be a great time to go back and revisit that, so that's great. Persona 4 Golden, on the other hand, is the upgraded release of Persona 4, and yes, while Golden was initially released on a portable platform as well, it was released on the PS Vita, which was more powerful than the PS2, so you're getting a refined version of Persona 4 all in all. And by the way, P3 does have some improvements over the the original Persona 3. Some people will go back and forth. I think most people will agree FES is the way to go, uh, but P3P is still good. Uh, P4 Golden, on the other hand, a lot of people I know consider this to be the best Persona game. Some people prefer it over Persona 5, which, you know, take it for what you will. Persona 5 is a tremendous game. Persona 4 is a tremendous game. Excellent soundtrack. Great story with some mystery to it. Obviously, an incredibly lengthy game, but super excited to play through both Persona 3 and Persona 4 again. And best of all, $19.99 price point. Oh, hell yeah. Sign me up for that two of the best jrpgs in the last few decades for that kind of price that's gonna be great and both drop on playstation 4 on january 19th Next up, we have Forspoken. Forspoken is another Square Enix release, and it is coming from Luminous Production, the fine folks that did Final Fantasy XV. And look, if Forspoken and FF15 have anything in common, it's that, that these games are incredibly, incredibly technically impressive. Now, Forspoken does have a free demo available on the PlayStation Store. I would highly recommend you to check that out because it's going to give you a good idea of the gameplay style of this game, which I think some people, when you try out the game initially, it is incredibly off-putting and it's a little bit awkward to say the least. Um, you have all these different magical abilities and you're constantly alternating between all of these magical abilities and it does get a bit chaotic, especially when there's a ton of enemies on screen. Um, but as you get used to it, it turns out to be a pretty well-made system and a pretty engaging system as well. I do know some people find the dialogue to be a bit heavy. You can turn that down, so that's uh, good. Um, and obviously, from a technical standpoint, it is quite good. Now, if you play this game on the performance mode, it actually doesn't maintain a lock 60 frames per second. It will dip in some of the chaotic scenes where, again, there's a ton of enemies and whatnot on the screen. The game itself is going to be interesting to see how it turns out. A brand new IP coming from Square Enix, and it will be dropping on PlayStation 5 exclusively 
exclusively as far as consoles go on January 24th. Next up, we have the latest in the long-running Disgaea franchise, Disgaea 7, which is scheduled for release sometime in 2023. Don't have an official release date over here stateside, but expect the traditional Disgaea gameplay that you know. If you have played Disgaea at this point, you've probably been sold on it or pushed away from it, but this is going to be one that is going to be incredibly colorful. Little bit interesting visual style as well. I mean, Disgaea is never going to be a Forspoken or a Final Fantasy 16 in terms of visuals, but it's got a cute style going on for it as well. Expect some comedy. Expect that grindy tactical gameplay as well as Disgaea 7 is scheduled for release sometime in 2023. Next up, we have yet another JRPG based on Sword Art Online and Sword Art Online Last Recollection. I mean, SAO is very popular. Think of what you want of it. I really enjoyed the first three episodes of SAO and then it completely fell off a cliff, but nonetheless, a lot of people are super into it, hence why it has gotten a multitude, a plethora of video games, and this is the latest one based on Sword Art Online's War of the Underworld anime arc. A new story unfolds with tough challenges that await our beloved hero Kirito and his new friends. Players will unmask the Dark Knight and find out if Kirito and the crew will survive the relentless battling against the forces of the Dark Territory. Sword Art Online Last Recollection is scheduled for release on both PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 sometime in 2023, and it will support one-player offline play and up to four-player co-op play online. Next up, here's one franchise people have been waiting a long time to see make a comeback. We have Suikoden 1 and 2 HD Remaster Gate Rune and Dunon Unification Wars. Coming to PlayStation 4, yes, it is an HD remaster collection of Suikoden 1 and 2. And by the way, Suikoden 2, last I checked, was going for a pretty penny on the PlayStation 1. So the fact we're finally getting an HD remaster, that's going to be nice to see. So we don't got to break the bank and buy the PS1 release. A Hero's Destiny is written in the stars. The legendary Konami JRPG Suikoden 1 and 2 have now been remastered in high definition. And you're going to get both of the games in one collection. Graphical improvements, pixel sprites, and environmental art enhanced with new screen effects, including lighting, clouds, and shadow animation. Animations, flickering flames, smoldering smoke, the movement of leaves and insects all add up to a lively in-game atmosphere. The effects and direction have been redesigned, bringing memorable scenes back to life in more beautiful ways. You've got new character drawing, sound improvements, and game system improvements as well. Dialogue log, auto battle, and double speed battles as well. Love me some double speed battles, something that more and more upgrades are starting to introduce in games in general, and like that as an in inclusion. We don't have an official release date, but it is scheduled for release sometime in 2023. Next up, a JRPG that people have been waiting quite a while for, should be out in 2023, fingers crossed, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. This is one that was announced, I want to say back in 2017, 2018, and people were immediately taken aback by the gorgeous visual style. It's got this cel-shaded watercolor look, looked fantastic from that standpoint. Gameplay looked interesting, Platinum Games was initially working on it, and then it got handed over for side games to do it in its entirety, and it's still shaping up quite nicely. Looks like development has been uh, progressing smoothly. Hopefully we finally see it this year because this is a game so many people are excited for. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink did also get a PlayStation 5 version added, so it will be coming to PS4 and PS5. Fingers crossed sometime in 2023. Next up, we have Fairy Fencer F Refrain Chord, which is coming to PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4, a tactical RPG directly connected to the story of Fairy Fencer F Advent Dark Force. Fang and the others run into a mysterious woman named Glace who has the ability to brainwash other people with her song. Another woman joins their party who also has the power of song. The two are known as Muses and are able to boost or change other people's abilities with the power of singing. It is a Fairy Fencer game in the style of a tactics title strategized to capitalize with an all new tactical RPG battle system used terrain and objects such as rocks, boxes, and grass to your advantage. Strategic positioning on the battlefield can raise your evasiveness or lower your movement speed, among other effects. Hidden fairies, locations, and treasures, an all-new story with multiple routes as well. Fairy Fencer F Refrain Chord is scheduled for release sometime in the spring of this year. Next up, we have the dating action RPG in Eternal Nights. Eternal Nights is a dating action RPG blending a love story with adrenaline-driven combat as you make the most out of life during the apocalypse, scavenge for supplies, explore dungeons, and go on dates. Face the infected, one day something or someone has turned humans into dangerous monsters. All that interests them now is violent. Violence and power, they are what stand between you, a cure, and what you want. Most importantly, you're fighting for more than just your own survival. You are fighting for those you love. Of course, you'll find love throughout the game, race the clock, explore dungeons, and you've got animated cutscenes as well. Eternal Nights is scheduled for a release sometime in the early portion of the year on PS4 and PS5. 
Next up, here's a game that's really going under the radar. We have the turn-based mystery JRPG, Mato Anomalies, which will be coming to PS4 and PS5 at a budget price point of $39.99. A turn-based RPG that takes players on a journey across Mato, a fantasized, neo-futuristic version of Old Shanghai. Take control of the dual protagonist, Doe and Graham, to investigate strange anomalies around the city or venture into rifts to battle demonic abominations determined to bring about the city's downfall. Team up with unlikely companions and unravel the dark secrets in the story of Beauty, hope, and justice. It's not a normal city that you'll be exploring, but it pretends to be. Who could have imagined the evil hiding beneath the surface? Such difficult situations bring together unlikely people, just like the protagonists. Utilizing their respective skills, they head out to unravel the mystery of Mato and defeat the evil forces trying to bring about its downfall. The game is scheduled for release, PS4, PS5, March 10th. Next up, we have the remaster of a game that I think many would consider to be a classic. Tales of Symphonia is getting a remaster with Tales of Symphonia remaster. Now, to be fair, Tales of Symphonia did already have a remaster back on the PlayStation 3. That version was priced at $40, and you got Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World as well. And uh, think what you want about Dawn of the New World, it was included as well. Now we have Symphonia remastered as a standalone and it will be priced uh, higher than that collection. But, you know, things happen. And uh, Tales of Symphonia, I'm sure, is a game that people are incredibly excited to revisit. This is a game that I think could have gone the route of doing a full-on remake. I know that that would have been a heavier undertaking. And they probably just wanted to do this as a remaster version. It's a classic, so, you know, it is what it is. I do hope that Bandai Namco and the Tales team do explore the idea of remaking Legacy Tales of Titles because I would absolutely die for a Tales of the Abyss remake. I think a lot of you guys that played Abyss would love that as well. Symphonia is one that a lot of people I know consider their favorite Tales of Title. It's one that I wouldn't consider my favorite, but it was really well made, really well designed, had a really good cast of characters. And now a larger audience will be able to revisit Tales of Symphonia as it is coming to PlayStation 4 on February 17th. Next up, here's a franchise that has been making waves over here stateside. We have The Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie. Along with that, we have The Legend of Heroes Trails to Azure. Now, we've gone through the song and dance of what order to play The Legend of Heroes games at. Go look up a video. There's a great video online going over why you should play the game sequentially. There's also the argument, hey, start with Trails of Cold Steel because that's the game that is visually the best looking, but, you know... You probably want to play the game sequentially, heading into Trails into Reverie, especially as that is kind of the conclusion of that Cold Steel arc. Um, especially if you start with Cold Steel, play all the Cold Steel games sequentially, obviously do that. Trails to Azure is the conclusion of the Crossbell arc. We did just see Trails from Zero drop last September. That game was great. Trails to Azure is the follow-up. It's going to be great. Legend of Heroes is great. Some of the best world building and storytelling that you're going to see. Not only in a JRPG, just video games in general. And that's what you're going to get when you have this many, you know, 100-hour JRPGs. And we are really just... I wouldn't say at the tip of the iceberg, but we're, we've are we only really gotten a decent way of the through. There's a lot more Legend of Heroes to come. Let's just put it that way. And yes, it is a massive undertaking to get into the franchise, but man, is it worth it. And yes, while you do have all of these lengthy JRPGs, the narrative is fairly cohesive. Like, it all comes together really well, and... The writing is incredibly well. The character development is done really strongly. I just can't say enough good things about Legend of Heroes. It's a franchise I feel like more people should get into, but I understand it is a daunting task to get into all of the games just because there's so much to get into. But if you're a big fan of JRPGs and you're a big fan of high-quality storytelling, Legend of Heroes should be at the top of your list. Trails to Azure drops this spring. Trails into Reverie will be dropping in July, so be excited for those. Next up, we have Ease 9 Monstrum Nox coming to PlayStation 5. Kind of a meme release as far as getting an upgraded release. I mean, Ease already looks really good on the PlayStation 4. It's not like the games are super technically advanced. But what they are really good at is being really good video games and really good JRPGs. Ease 8 was awesome. Ease 9 was very good. More of a darker tone to Ease 9. I mean, Ease 8 had a bit of a darker tone as well. But Ease 9 was really, really good. Had a good cast of characters. And it's that Ease gameplay that just works really well. And from a soundtrack standpoint... Ease is always killing it. Of course, we are looking forward to Ease uh, 10, but that probably won't be in 2023. I imagine 2024 uh, for that release, especially over here in the West. So yeah, be mindful of that. 
Next up, coming from Xseed, we have Trinity Trigger. Trinity Trigger is an all-new action RPG combining the look and feel of iconic RPGs of the 90s with an emphasis on fast-paced, customizable combat. Players take control of three young heroes as they attempt to defy fate and save the world. Accompanying them are the Triggers, strange creatures with the unique ability to transform into eight types of weapons that players must master if they hope to be successful on their quest. Whether playing alone or with up to two friends via local co-op play, explore diverse biomes and dungeons, strategize to exploit enemy weaknesses, and change your destiny. Trinity Trigger is scheduled for a release sometime in 2023. Next up, major release from Square Enix, we have Octopath Traveler 2. Yes, this will be coming to PS4 and PS5 this time around. Kind of a bummer we didn't see a release of Octopath Traveler 1 on PS4, but hey, what can you do? Octopath Traveler 2, we've already seen a lengthy amount of gameplay of it, and it looks to have that same great HD 2D art style that I know some people aren't all on board with, but I love the look of it. I love these kinds of throwbacks that also do modernize the look a little bit. I think if you're a fan of RPGs and JRPGs, Octopath Traveler is one that has quite a bit of depth to it and Octopath Traveler 2 will hopefully build upon what they've done with these HD 2D titles and the game is scheduled for a release here very very soon February 24th. And lastly, we have Atelier Rise of 3, Alchemist of the End, and The Secret Key. This is a franchise that's been long running with a hardcore fan base, a 25th anniversary title of the long beloved Atelier JRPG franchise. Atelier Rise of 3, Alchemist of the End, features a real time tactical battles with effects and presentation that are greatly enhanced from previous titles in the series. Players can select up to five battle members among the 11 total party members and fight together as one team. A new system that transitions between battles and the use of keys speed up each fight and makes for a a more seamless experience. Three battle members will be positioned up front and two in the rear with players having the ability to use and swap out various skill sets as well. Atelier Rise of 3, Alchemist of the End and the Secret Key is dropping on PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4 on February 24th. And that is going to do it for me again. That is just PS4 and PS5 releases. If we expanded this to PC, Nintendo Switch, uh, Xbox really doesn't get any exclusive JRPGs, but maybe they will get one or two. Um, it would be even bigger of a catalog of games that would be dropping. Uh, it's just a great time to be a JRPG fan. And again, all of these scheduled for 2023, maybe the one FF7 Remake Part 2 Rebirth, that could get pushed into early 2024. Um, but... Crisis Core FF7 was scheduled for winter of 2022, and I thought that was going to get pushed into 2023 as well, but that came out at the end, December 13th, so hopefully we'll see a December release for FF7 Rebirth as well. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, I've kind of been on this song and dance with Grand Blue Fantasy Relink for a while now, so I have a little bit of skepticism towards that, but hey, hopefully this is the year we'll finally see the release of that as well. Nonetheless, there's going to be more games announced, more games revealed, and this is just what we know. As of January 2nd, we're on the beginning of the year, and there's going to be more games that are going to get announced and revealed, and then be ultimately released before the year's up. So a lot of reason to be excited. So many games. We'll have all of them listed in the description box below. As always, thank you for watching. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.